Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichek here. Got a slightly longer video, but I want to lay out for you a likely scenario that explains all the chronic inflammation that's occurring, that's causing disease, and why so many people have SIBO, or small intestine bacterial overgrowth. So just as a quick review, this <clears throat> image here is our, our gut, uh, and so your stomach, small intestine, flows to the large intestine. We've got these uh, birds here representing these uh, families of bacteria. They tend to live in the small intestine, and the fish tend to live in the large intestine. And the ratio is 1 to 100 million. Okay, Now, <clears throat> SIBO is just super common. Okay, Now, if you look at the research, they don't want to use that word because it requires the researchers to prove that aspect in the study and it gets too complicated. So they often say, we think it's SIBO, we're just gonna call it dysbiosis. They're using that term, all right? But SIBO is S-I-B-O, and S-I is small intestine, B, bacteria, O, overgrowth, by about 100,000 times, the bacteria. Now, what this does is the bacteria leak through the tissue, it's not made for it, you know, there's very little bacteria up there normally, so they have 100,000 times, leaks between the seams, and then the tissue that surrounds that small intestine is about 70% of the immune system and causes a massive wave of inflammatory stress and triggering disease. Now, I've been practicing medicine almost 40 years, okay? The stuff that we now know is SIBO was happening some back in the 80s, but not very much, all right? It's clear from the 70s or 80s, in my estimation, SIBO starts occurring, the inflammation starts growing, and you see this acceleration of a wide range of disorders that are happening more frequently and in younger and younger patients. And so, what are SIBO-related diseases? <clears throat> Oh, this is a list from a, a recent paper linking, showing the linkages between uh, small intestine bacterial overgrowth and other illnesses. So we have gastrointestinal disorders, IBS, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, celiac, fatty liver disease, you know, cirrhosis, pancreatitis. Here we've got heart failure, you know, blood clots in the legs, heart disease, strokes, diabetes, cholesterol issues, thyroid problems, acute chronic disease, kidney problems, a rosacea, psoriasis, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, autism, depression, anxiety, cystic fibrosis, uh, Mediterranean fever, and a bunch of cancers, your pancreatic, colio, carcinoma, gastric, colorectal, esophagogastric, hepatocellular, and you can add into that brain, breast, colon, okay? And these are all being linked with SIBO. These are all disorders are triggered and or driven by inflammation. So I wanna explain what I believe is what happened several decades ago. And it has to do with the motility of the intestinal tract. All right, and so <clears throat> your intestinal tract is driven by the brain, the autonomic nervous system, as well as what's called the enteric nervous system, which is kind of a little brain located in the intestinal tract itself, okay? And if we have an injury here, the what happens is the entire intestinal tract can slow down. So if somebody gets a concussion, you know, some of the things we'll see is about 50 to 70% of people um, are constipated in the first week after getting hit in the head, okay? That's slow motility of the colon. Well, about 30, 50% have heartburn or reflux. That's slow emptying of the stomach. And you can get slow emptying of the small intestine, and that's what's important. So here's what I believe has led to this increase in <clears throat> SIBO, the inflammatory stress that we're seeing in everybody, and this massive rate of increase of inflammatory disorders. <clears throat> okay. 
in the 60s and 70s, there was an increasing incidence of diabetes and obesity in India. We were having an increase here of diabetes and heart disease. And they came to discover it was due to some high linoleic oils that were being put in the food supply. Okay, and that these cause a great deal of inflammation. What are those oils? Here, soybean, sunflower, sunflower, corn, vegetable, grapeseed, sesame, and shortening. This is represents basically the industrialization of the food supply. All right, these are highly, highly inflammatory. And also in the processing of food, what was happening is they're cooking food at high temperatures. We have uh, what are called advanced glycation end products. I have other videos on that. And now we're starting to understand foods were being put into plastics. Okay. And the micro microplastics are a concern for inflammation. So this triggers this low grade inflammation <clears throat> that's starting to trigger some disease. <clears throat> and that inflammation will cause damage to the parasympathetic nervous system, which is predominantly responsible for intestinal motility. All right. Uh, also damages the enteric nervous system. You start getting slow intestinal motility and the slow motility is your primary risk factor for developing SIBO. Now, you couple that with a little injury. It could be a physical one, okay? But a lot of people are like, I have never hit my head. Emotional traumas can do it. Inflammatory traumas can do it. What's an inflammatory trauma? Inflammatory trauma is um, a vaccine. It is COVID. It is a scalpel cutting you, okay, in surgery. So... All of these things, if you have underlying slow motility already because of this initial process here, and you get a trauma and it slowers it a little bit more, suddenly it triggers SIBO. So basically, you're like this, the gut is slow, but you're still hanging in there, you're okay, and it just takes this little boom, and now you're like that. And now you're spewing out all this inflammatory stuff in the gut, okay? and that inflammatory stuff here now is starting to trigger all this disease in the following decades in the population. More and more and more people are having this. Okay, this is the most likely thing that happened. Are they gonna be able to prove this? Not for a long time. They won't, they won't be able to agree on it. You're gonna have industry fighting because you know they don't want people to think that the soybean oil they were putting in the food supply was toxic. Okay, and the government won't want the people to know that the government let them do it when we knew it. Okay, am I a big conspiracy guy? No, but this is just shameful what happened. So, how do we get out of this mess? All right, but we've got high inflammatory stuff from the food supply, and now we've got the slow motility, and now it's triggering SIBO, and that gives you even more inflammation, and that's why you're getting all these medical problems. Okay, what you've got to do is this. First, the food supply. You try to get rid of as much of the processed foods. These are the packaged pre-cooked stuff. And the crackers and all that kind of stuff, all right? And that will help lower your AGEs as well as these vegetable oils and things that you're getting in your food supply. Olive oil will protect you from all of these oils. It is the major thing in the Mediterranean diet that's helpful. Extra virgin olive oil will protect you from that. Now, when you're cooking at home, use canola oil. It's safe. It's not inflammatory. So you switch from cooking to canola. You put, everybody needs two tablespoons of olive oil every day to pick up all this other crap that's coming in the food supply. All right? That's going to start lowering your inflammation. Now, when you SIBO, everybody needs the antibiotic called rifaximin. The only thing rifaximin can do is treat SIBO, period. If you take rifaximin and you're like, wow, I felt better, you had it. You don't need any other tests for SIBO, okay? And so, <clears throat> rifaximin, now, if your problems have only been going on for a short time, you might get away with 10 days. What I'm finding is more successful is I put people on twice a day refaxman for at least four months, typically, 
and that shuts off this inflammation. They get their stuff together at home, they're getting their fish oil, olive oil, it shuts off this inflammation. What happens? Now the nervous system recovers. Motility improves. <clears throat> and after you stop rifaximin, they're much less likely to relapse, okay? And so that's how you can shut this off. As the inflammation goes down, there's decreased incidence of chronic disease, better outcomes, and, and so forth. So, <coughs> gosh, excuse me. This is what's going on. And this is what my protocol does. It's very effective. So I hope this helps you all understanding uh, what's happened in the, the whole population and the few simple things you can do to help yourself. Other than that, take care.